Good morning beautiful people. How are you all today? I hope you're well. I'm back to the garden on a gorgeous day. It's so bright and warm and sunny but there is a bit of a hoolie blowing because we've got a cold front coming in and ahead of it it's mashing up the air <laughs> and we're going to get some rain later but that's great. Um, and I was thinking in the last couple of days about the weather because I really need to get a wriggle on with two main things at the moment. I need to get my garlic in and my broad beans in. And here we are at the middle of October virtually and normally they would have been done a week, two weeks ago even. But it's been so warm and sunny and gorgeous it just doesn't feel like October and I was reflecting on this and thinking it kind of shows how as gardeners we're, we're sort of more in tune with with outside with nature than we are with calendar dates so for instance in March it's the seed packet says so in March but we know that it's it's still cold and wet and dark out there we kind of hold off for a few weeks um, so it's definitely good <laughs> to be in tune with nature and to be responding to how the weather is but on the other hand it will change at some point so I do need to get a wriggle on to get those last two things in which means today I need to get a wriggle on to get my potatoes out because they are currently where the garlic is going to go so I don't have high hopes for the spuds this year. Hmm. Obviously I had my new potatoes out quite some time ago. Um, this summer, as we all know, it was so long and hot and dry. I was having to water pretty much every night f from the end of May right through to about the middle of August. And as time was going on, you know, I was becoming really aware of how much water I was using. And of course, none of us had any water left in our rain butts. That was long since gone. <sighs> I'm always kind of mindful about that water consumption. So I did stop watering the potatoes about, it must have been, I think, about the end of June, beginning of July. I just decided that's it because they take so much. They're not a hugely important crop for me. The new potatoes I really, really enjoy. And if I only had space for between new and main crop, I'd always go for the new because they're so scrummy over the summer. So like I said, they're not a hugely important crop for me. And just sort of being aware of water consumption, like I say, I decided to stop watering them. I left them to it. So I'm not expecting any great shakes from them. But, you know, there's bound to be one or two. And I think tonight for my supper, I will have a baked potato because there's nothing better than a baked potato with just a little bit of oil drizzled on it straight from the garden. Yay! So, and I also need to get a regal on today because like I say, we've got this rain coming through. But actually, these last six weeks have been perfect, absolutely perfect gardening weather because it's warm and bright and beautiful want to be out there but it hasn't been hot like that searing heat of the summer which was just exhausting and made all of us want to just get in the hammock and sack the garden off so it's been beautifully warm we've been having intermittent rain about every sort of 10 days or so we've been getting a bit of rain which is just enough to soften the soil a bit to make it a bit more manageable from that concrete we had in the summer so, I've got Rusty <laughs> next to me, that's what you can hear in the background. I think we'll have a little bit of a cuddle and some quiet time together to start the day. And then we'll get down to the garden and start seeing what's beneath the soil. Now, there's one very, very good rule when you're digging up your potatoes. Absolutely golden rule and I can't overemphasize it. That is, when you're getting your potatoes out, you must adopt 
a pirate accent. Because <laughs> let's face it, we're looking for buried treasure. Like I say, I have no idea how these are going to be. And frankly, I've got little hopes for them. Oh, that's a peanut. Some of these that died back. I'm just wondering if they die back before they actually produced anything. Oh, despite that rain, this ground is so heavy still. Oh, another peanut there. Okay. Nothing. <laughs> Let's try one that's still a bit green. So, as I was mentioning the other day, these ones that are still green, the skins won't have had a chance to cure yet. They normally cure as the plant is dying back. So what I will do, if there are any under here, are I forgot the pirate rule. If there's any under here, I'm gonna set them out in the sun, because it's a beautiful sunny day today. Set them out in the sun and uh, let the sun cure the skins for me. I really do think it's going to be pretty shoddy this year. Um, one thing that often happens when it's hot and dry is that you can end up with really quite scabby potatoes. That's where you see lots of little pock marks on the skin. It doesn't affect the eating, you can still eat them. And in fact, because I never skin my potatoes, I still eat the skins even if they're scabby. These aren't looking too bad though. They're not big, but they're not scabby. It really, really is. Oh, <laughs> hair and face. It really is the most powerful out in the garden at the moment. The breeze is lovely. The sunshine is just heavenly. Oh, sod's law, isn't it? Skewered one. I'll just. Any that I uh, skewer, I'll just set aside and use pronto. Oh, they're tiny! They're so tiny! What I'll do when I've got them all out, or when I think I've got them all out, is I'll just go through the bed again really thoroughly. Because in any case, I'm going to be adding a load of chicken poo and hopefully I've got some compost ready to go in here too. Oh, overreaching Vivi, don't overreach. So, yeah, hopefully if I miss any this time, I'll get them. Oh, come on, gotcha. Yeah, I'll get them when I go back through the bed. shows just what a tricky year it's been this year for the fact that I've hardly had to weed. You know, even the weeds have struggled for goodness sakes. For which I'm very grateful. Mind you, having said that, I don't mind a weeding session. I quite like just sort of parking my bum on the floor and quietly, thoroughly going through a section. Ooh. Oh well, oh well. Since our last rain, ground has dried out quite a bit so this is slightly harder work than I was anticipating. Come on, get 
get out. Am I gonna have a whole lot of this? Oh well, you know what? There are spots, maybe not a huge amount, but they've not taken up a lot of space. So I should just be grateful for every mouthful I get. And like I say, it's not it's not a veg I eat a huge amount of anyway. <laughs> Good job by the looks of what's coming out. So yeah, I'll be grateful for whatever I get. Come on. It's hard to imagine it's hard to imagine at the moment that hopefully in a few hours this will be a nicely prepared bed for the garlic to go into. But that's what I'm hoping to do today. If nothing else is get the this bed, even if I don't sow the garlic, so at least get it ready. And the bed that the peppers were in would be for the broad beans, so that's another one to get ready. So that one will involve a bit of digging because part of where the new bed is going to be is where I had one of the paths. So I'll need to dig it out. Um, yeah, like I say, if nothing else, get these beds ready and then when I'm back at the weekend I can get the seeds and my garlic in. Ooh. Room wasn't built in a day and all that. I mean if I've got the energy and the rain holds off I'll try to get them in today. <coughs> Of course, the idea with the new beds, the new layout, will be that I don't have to do as much digging. Fingers crossed. Oh, and um, <laughs> the other day when I was taking down the cucumber frame and removing the last of the plants and chopping them up for compost, I found one more squash. A little baby butternut had escaped my attention. So that brought my squash haul to 50. Yay! I've actually, um, I've already given about 10 of them away. There's a couple of places locally that do lunches for the homeless. So, some of the bigger ones for them. Yay! And squash for me for the rest of the year. <laughs> There be potatoes. <laughs> Ooh, getting warm. So they may not be the biggest haul ever, nor the biggest spuds ever, but you know, they'll do me. And actually, let me just show you the sort of size. This, I think this is one of the bigger ones. You know, for a meal for one, that's perfectly adequate. Whoopsie. And then what I'll do with the really, really little tiddly ones, let me show you some of the real tiddlers. Look at the size of them. I'll just give those a really, really quick boil and put them in a salad or I might just 
stick a load of them in a on a baking sheet and, and roast them. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. So at this stage, I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to spread them out on my table in the sunshine just to help their skins cure a bit. I don't wash them. I remove, you know, any great big clods of dirt like that. I'll just brush that off. But otherwise, I just leave them completely be. <laughs> and the reason I don't give them a wash or a scrub at this stage, those skins are the packaging for preserving them or for storing them. So I don't want to touch or damage the skins in any way. When I come to use them, of course, I can give them a bit of a, a scrub or a brush. As you're going through, just look for, I saw one earlier, where is it? Ah, here. Just look for any that have got, ooh, look, little wormhole. I won't store these. So any that have got a little hole or that I spiked with my fork, they will get used up pronto. Right, now I need to make something to store them in. And I don't like spending money, so I'm going to do a DIY, or as I like to call it, TIY, try it yourself, storage sacks for my potatoes. As with nearly everything I do in the garden, I try to do it for free or for as little money as possible. So I make my potato sacks each year from old newspapers. This, um, in London and I know in other cities, we get free newspapers at the stations in the morning and then a load of them dumped later on in the afternoon when people have finished reading them, so I kind of scavenge those. It would actually be slightly better with a broadsheet, just a bit bigger. Um, so if you don't read the papers and you want to do it for free, just ask around with your neighbours if any of them <clears throat> take a broadsheet and ask them, rather than they put it in their recycling, could you please have it? Or have a few. Ah, oh, this is going to be so easy on a windy day, isn't it? Hold on, some pots there waiting to be washed. And literally all I do with some parcel tape, this is the only cost, but I buy this parcel tape in bulk anyway because of my shop. <laughs> this is going to be nigh on impossible in the wind. Hang on, let me line these sheets up again. I think we need something to weigh there. Oh, I know, we'll use, we'll use the, uh, the old iron that I wake my shed door with. I hope it doesn't blow shut with a bang, the uh, shed door, because Rusty's in there. I don't want to frighten him. And then I literally... <laughs> Wind, go away. Tape down one side. Oh, this is impossible in the wind. <laughs> this is going to be a messy one. It doesn't matter as long as it does the job. The long side, and now I've lost my tape end, of course. Then you can tell, you can tell what I'm doing, can't you? And then down the other long side. Quickly across the bottom. And they have it, a free sack for your spuds. Let's just open a few pages. Look, perfect, little sack. Keeps the light out. I'll just keep this at home somewhere cool, like sort of just outside my front door where it's never frosty, but um, there's no central heating or anything there. Bob's your uncle. You can, of course, ask at your local greengrocers if they've got any old potato sacks, but, um, yeah, I would just say save yourself the money of buying those hessian sacks you see advertised. I mean, some of them cost a fortune, don't they? It seems daft to me. But also, I don't really like the hessian sacks as much as the paper sacks because the hessian sacks still do let some light in. And light's the worst thing for your spuds. So, I need to spread them out on the table in the sunshine. Later on, make another couple of sacks because I'll need a few for this little lot. And in the meantime, I need to get on with that bed to prep it for the garlic. This is now an ex-potato bed. So, because I've come up with this uh, notion of dividing each of my big beds into five smaller beds, 
you see for instance over there I took the cukes out and the path well it's blown up um, what it is going to mean is that this autumn there is going to be some work to do so here you can see I've moved that path across nearly a foot or so because in the rest of this bed where the tomatoes were here and this fennel bed they're a little bit narrow so they all need to scoot down a bit which it may seem like a lot of work look it is going to be a lot of work over the next few days um, <laughs> but the idea is is to decrease the work over the coming years so where any ground is really compacted like this I am going to have to dig it up that there's no way you can sow anything in there they wouldn't stand a chance so a bit of a dig up then an addition of a load of chicken poo and I was going to add compost here but just looking at how much compost is already rotted in the bins I don't think I'm going to have enough for this and for the broad beans which are going um, there so and as this is just for garlic and the garlic is never great here I'm just going to give it some chicken poo and then over the coming days get some mulch down on it too so that in the spring when this gets followed by the flint corn I can just either dig the mulch in very lightly or just plant the corn through the mulch right let's do some hard hard work in case you're wondering why my uh, metal bucket is there whenever I'm doing any digging I always keep the metal bucket with me and into that goes uh, glass and random bits of plastic that I still find in my beds from goodness knows how long ago right stop procrastinating Vivi get digging
but that was enough to burn off all the calories from my lovely Dorset cream tea a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Let's go and do the other bird. That needs a bit more digging, I think. But you know what? Hard work ain't gonna kill me, is it? So, just suck it up and get on with it. Wowzers. Now, that might not look much, but getting this old path dug out, crikey, that's taken me the best part of an hour. Goodness me, much more um, compact than the one in the potatoes. And I think that's because with the potato bed, like I said, I, I just stopped using that path because I wasn't watering most of, well, from the end of June. So I haven't walked on that path July, August, September, October. Whereas this path was in constant use for me to get to the squash to water, get to the cutes, whatever. Anyway, yes, hard, hard work. My knees are starting to complain, so I'm just going to do some other less physical jobs. Um, and also, because we are due rain, um, I'm going to let the rain do some of the work for me, soften the soil a bit more, and then I can come back to it tomorrow with my long-handled three-pronged cultivator just to break it up a little bit more for planting the broad bean seed. And oopsie, what I love about the, um, the cultivator is it used to belong to our lovely old mate Paddy. So whenever I use it, I feel a sense of his guiding hand with me. Wonderful. Now, the rest of this bed, as you can see, it's been cleared. I was doing this the other day. The, the, where the paths are, there was a path under this plank. You see how it sort of lines up with that one. And then this path sort of lines up there and that path lines up there. That's great. I don't need to take these paths out. I will give them some new lengths of cardboard, keeps pressing the weeds. But generally, I'm not gonna have to do much to this bed this winter apart from Ah, I'll talk about wintergreen manure in the next video because um, there's a slight change of plan. This bird, however, is going to need a considerable amount of work because at the moment there's one, two, three, oh, there's another one up there, four part, three parts, I beg your pardon. It's chopped into four parts and it needs to be in five parts. So all of these parts will have to come out. Plus what I used in the middle over this year um, that sort of central path so that was in because obviously the beans were on either side completely the ways along um, so I had no access from the side but what I'm planning next year is that the bean arches just go on the ends of the beds they don't cross the paths so I can still have my sideways paths so yeah there's a lot of <laughs> digging and wintergreen manuring to be done for this bed but I'm in no desperate hurry. The main thing at the moment is to get that bed and the X potato bed properly finished and prepped in the next couple of days and, uh, and then start getting my garlic and broad beans in. And you can see, look, it's still, you know, great, tough lumps in there. But like I say, I'm gonna let the rain do some of the work I need to give my knees a rest. <laughs> oh, that's a funny, happy sight. <laughs> my potatoes having their little sun bath to um, help their skins cure. Phew! -y. Excuse my sweaty, betty head. <laughs> really, I can see their sweaty hairline. Wow, it got warm today. Really warm. A little bit too warm for digging. <laughs> Shouldn't complain. Look, the bottom line is this. Yes, it's hard work, especially if you've got weak wrists from breaking both of them. I'm so clumsy and uh, dodgy knees. Thank you, family genetics. But the point is, it is doable. It is all doable. You just have to set your mind to it. And for instance, when I was just in that path that used to be in the pepper and vine bed. I got about half of it done and I just thought, oh, I'm just going to give up and do it another day. And I thought, no, Vivi, don't, because don't give up, because if you give up, it's not going to get done, is it? That's the bottom line all the time. Don't expect to be sitting at home, I don't know, watching telly, playing on your computer, 
sit in the pub, chat with her, whatever it is, and expect the garden to do itself, because it won't. <laughs> You've just got to get out there and do it. Um, you know, if, if like me, you've got some bones which are a bit wonky, you might have to do it in smaller chunks than you'd like. So, for instance, for me today, that's three hours, getting the spuds up, digging up those two paths, doing a few other bits and pieces. I'll probably spend another half an hour down here now, just um, tidying up after myself, getting the spuds into sacks, packing the granny trolley with some squash, um, etc, etc. But yeah, even three and a half, four hours is doable. Just get out and do it. And if you start finding that you're making excuses like, oh, it's too cold, it's too hot, it's too wet, it's too dry, just remind yourself how lucky you are to have an outdoor space to grow some veggies and get out there. <laughs> right, that's the end of my lecture. Oh, I think I'm just going to sit for a while because honestly, who would have thought we'd have this in October? It's heavenly. So I'm going to sit and make the most of it for a little while longer. Next time I see you, hopefully that rain will have come and helped a bit and I'll get in my broad beans and my garlic. So I'll see you all really soon, I hope. But in the meantime, take care and get out into your gardens and do something. <laughs>